So we'll start mm -hmm. our notes, um, like I said, on page 19. We're going to be talking about area, and we're going to use this box to help us figure out the area of this floor plan. And so remember, area is length times width. And if I'm trying to figure out the area of, in this case, the bedroom, I would do 11 times 12. And so to figure out that area, 11 times 12, and then I'd multiply those things together. The area of my bedroom is whatever 11 times 12 is. If you plug that in your calculator, I think it's 132. Yeah. <laughs> On the videos, yeah, I don't know why we do that, but we do. Okay. So 11 times 2... I don't have a label on this, it's area, I'll call it unit squared. But the living room, even though it doesn't have like lengths on either side, I know that this 11 is gonna carry through to the um, length of that living room. And then the width of the living room, the 18 will carry through. So 11 by 18 is my living room. And again, pull out your calculator and figure out that multiplication. And when I do it on my calculator, I get 198. So this is 198 units squared. Bathroom has both of its um, measurements surrounding it, 9 by 12. 9 times 12, get that. 108. That's okay, you don't have to apologize, you're pretty darn close. And then my kitchen, 9 by 18. And so 162. Okay, so hopefully that didn't seem too terrible. What we did was just multiplication, and we filled in each of the little squares on this um, box. We're going to connect that to our algebra. So, Trev, you need to make sure that you put your phone away because you need to be joining us. And um, Brady, you as well. You need to be joining us because we're going to have some new little pieces to this. Like this part, you might be like, oh, I can do this. But we're going to add a new little connection to it. Okay, so if I want to figure out the whole area of the house... What I have to do is add together all the little areas. So this would be 132 plus 198 plus 108 plus 162, and I would get my total area of the whole rectangle by adding together the little pieces. Again, I have it here with numbers, but we're going to make a connection with it with the algebra very shortly in our next spot. So I need to do this math here, though. Add that all together. So don't be ashamed to take out your calculator. I say it all the time. Oops, I missed that. 108. And if you need a calculator, I have them hanging in the back. So this is 600 units squared total. Great. Okay. You don't need to write the word total on the end, but it is total. Okay, so next, moving on. Now we're going to try it where we have letters involved. Same concept. We started on page 19. Letters involved. But when you remember when you multiply, we learned our power rules. So this is where we revisit our power rules. When we multiply two things, I can only multiply the numbers together. So this is 3 times 4 but the X goes at the end. So 3 times 4 is 12X. Three times 5, 15. Great. Excellent. 2X times 4X. 8X what? X times X is what? It is, because I have a little power of 1, and I add those powers x to the second. 
So 8x to the second. And then 2x times 5. Nice job. So what is the area of the whole rectangle? So as a product, I would write this as 3 plus 2x times 4x plus 5, that's this combination, is equal to the sum of all of these added together. So 12x plus 15 plus 8x squared plus 10x. And usually when I do this kind of stuff, add together a lot of like little terms, what I do is I combine the like terms. So I'm going to add the ones that are just single x's. And then I also put it in what I call descending order, highest power first. So my highest power is 8x squared. And then the single x's are 12x plus 10x would be plus 22x. And then the last thing on the end would be the plus 15. This piece is known as my product. This piece is the product. where I multiply them together, this piece at the end is known as the sum. And we're going to be talking a lot about the product and the sum. So know the difference. Product is when you write it as a multiplication problem. So if I look at this next problem here in problem number three, I am given the product. So this right here is the product. My job is going to be to find the sum. So when I'm trying to make this connection from this product to this box, what I'll do is I write these values, they each get a side. So 4y minus 7, I'll put it on, on this side. It's minus 7, so I make it a negative 7. Trev, what did I say about your phone? Please put it in the, don't set it on your desk. You need to put it in that caddy now or throw it on the floor either way. Okay. This next one, 6y minus 1. Now, they put theirs along the bottom. I like to put mine along the top. I don't know why. I just prefer it along the top. I think it's easier for me to read. It's easier for me to look at. And then the other added bonus is when I work through this, it puts them in order from highest power to lowest power. So that's why I prefer to do it that way. So now I do 4y times 6y. Anybody? 4y times 6y. 24 y to the second. Don't forget the powers on those. 4y times negative 1. Negative 7 times 6y. Excellent. Negative 7 times negative 1. Positive 7, yeah. Okay? So my product... 4y minus 7 times 6y minus 1. I'm going to rewrite that. 4y minus 7 times 6y minus 1 is equal to the sum of all these little squares added here. Notice that these two diagonal are like terms. So when I write my final sum, I can add these two diagonals together before I put it in my sum. My sum is the sum of all the squares. So I'll start with 24y squared. Then I'll combine these. What's negative 4 plus negative 42? Negative 4 plus negative 4. Yep, so that's negative 46y. Don't forget to put the y on them. It's not y squared because I'm adding. Powers only change by multiplication. Then I'll add that last one plus 7. A lot of times people are like, well, I don't know what sign to put. If it's positive, you put a plus. If it's negative, you put a minus. So this was a negative 46 and a positive 7. So this would be my final answer, product, and sum. So the box method is just a way of arranging your terms 
or our polynomials, in this case they're binomials, two numbers in each term. It's a way of arranging our terms so that we can multiply them in a very organized manner. I'm going to flip to the next page, and we're going to look at a different way of doing that same thing. I brought up the distributive property earlier. In fact, I'm going to start with this very last one here. Remember, the distributive property means I multiply everything in the first, or this first number, by what's in the second. My pen's not working, so I'll go back to this color. This first number times the, so 3x times 6x, and then 3x times 11. Actually, it's negative 11 is how I'm going to treat it. So 3x times 6x, 18x squared. 3x times negative 11 is minus 33x. That's the distributive property. I went to that last one because it had one term, a monomial times a binomial, one term times two terms. But what if I have two binomials, two terms times two terms? Well, then I have to double up my distributive property. Everything in the first by everything in the second. Cadence, your phone needs to be put away as well. Are you? Then get, I'm getting off your back then, Cadence. What's wrong with me? So this is x times 3x. That multiplication isn't too bad. It's 3 and then the 2x's become 3x squared. Then I do x times 2. That multiplication isn't too bad either, 2x. Now I have to do the other number in there, 5 times 3x. I don't know why I keep going back to that pen, that doesn't work. 5 times 3x, so that's plus 15x. And then I do 5 times 2, so that's plus 10. Notice I did two colors. I have a first half and a second half. This double distributive property can be used in place of the box method for multiplying. It's just another option. I'm still going to have to combine these like terms. So I end up with 3x squared plus 2x plus 15x plus 17x plus 10 as my final answer. Now, if I would have lined these up across on the box method, I would have ended up with that same answer, okay? So I want to do the same thing with this next one. The first times the first, the first times the second. 2y times 5y, 10y squared. 2y times 7, 14y. Because it's positive, I put a plus between them. Now I'll do the second half. I'm going to treat this like a negative 5. Negative 5 times positive 5, negative 25, and there's a y on there, so I'll put the y on the end. Negative 5 times positive 7, negative 35. I should end up with two like terms in the center. So 10y squared, watch out for the signs. What is 14 plus negative 25? 14 plus negative 25, negative 11y minus 35. And there's my final answer. So there is two methods that we used. We used one where we did the distributive property and one where we did the box method. So down here on our next problems, I should give you room to write those down. I'm gonna, just going to take the first person's input. Should we do the distributive property or should we do the box method? Does anybody have a preference? Anyone, anyone? Box method, great. Box method looks like this. I just create a box. I write the first one down the side and the second one across the top. Do not forget to put the negative in it. I can 
That's fine. No, that's fine. We'll do the next one, distributive property. So then here we go. 2x times x, 2x squared, 2x times negative 3, minus 6x, 4 times x, 4x, 4 times negative 3, negative 12. What I like about the box method is I always have those two together, so when I write my simplified form, I can do that addition right away. The 4x plus negative 6x diagonal here, and minus 12. I think the box method goes pretty quickly, and it also makes it so I can't forget one of the multiplications. In the distributive property, sometimes we forget all the things that we have to multiply, okay? So here I go on distributive property on the next one, just again to see the difference between the two. First times the first, first times the second, second times the first, second times the second. I don't want to forget to do all of those things. 4y squared plus 32y minus 1y, that's negative 1 times y, minus 8. Combine like terms and final answer. If you did the box method on that, you would get the same answer. Now when we do work down on the problem where I have one by one, you can do the box method on these as well. It's just that when you set up your box, it would be a one by two. So 2x would be along the side and 5x plus 4 would be along the top. And some people still like that organization and it's a way not to forget what you're multiplying. 10x squared and 8x, so this would be 10x squared plus 8x. But most people think when they see it like this, why would I bother making the box when it's just that distributive property would work just as quickly. So 3x times 2x, 6x cubed, remember that's a first power and a squared, minus 12x. And again, either way, Either method is personal preference, okay?